Chad Bainins with us, Managing Director, Senior Gaming, Lodging and Theaters Analyst at Macquarie U.S. Equity Research, and Kent, Stephen Kent, Media Director at Consumer Choice Center. So I'll start with you, Chad. I mean, Macquarie has always seemed to like IMAX uh, the best. I is that still the case for the group? Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Nicole. Ho hopefully you had a nice weekend. Um, IMAX did better than others this weekend. Another result where um, they kind of outperform their market share. So they did about 20% of the business for Furioso. Unfortunately, the overall number for Furioso, for Garfield, for overall box office receipts in North America was well below expectations. So it was about $125 million uh, divided by 10 um, average ticket price. We're talking about about 12 million people that went to the box office this weekend versus historical periods where it's 18 to 20 million. So IMAX did fare better than others. Yeah, and what about, Chad, before I get to uh, Stephen, just AMC, you have an underperform, and what about um, Cinemark, a a underperform for AMC, right? Yes, we're still at a price target of $3.50 for AMC. Um, you know, look, it's, it's, it's the same old story fundamentally for this company. Uh, they continue to have deferred rent. They continue to have negative operating leverage. When people aren't filling the seats, it's just much more difficult for companies of this size um, in locations, inner cities in Los Angeles, New York, et cetera, uh, to make money here. So we're expecting for a softer than expected second quarter. Cinemark does a little bit better on the margin, they also are diversified down into Latin America. So we have a $24 price target on Cinemark. That's about 30% upside from current levels. They also have lower leverage. So our order would be IMAX, then Cinemark, and then AMC uh, on our fundamental views. Yeah, you said $3. I had read $3.50. I'm sorry, just a clarification. Is the price target $3 or $3.50? Three, $3.50. That's correct. Thanks. $3.50. Okay, great. I just wanted to clarify that. Stephen, I want to talk to you all about some of the themes we've been seeing. Of course, we had the Hollywood mm -hmm. writers strike, the actors strike. We came off the pandemic. There was so much was that so much. all of these movie theaters had to do. Now, where do we stand in your opinion? Well, we stand in a pretty bad place. Uh, we, you know, we've been talking about the slow and steady decline of the movie theater now for well over a decade. You know, this Furiosa Mad Max movie uh, sets a new Memorial Day uh, bad record for showing in the box office. I think it's uh, the worst in 30 years since Casper 1995, which, you know, was a good movie, by the way, but that's neither here nor there. Um, you know, th the business model of movie theaters is incredibly strained. Consumers are already strapped, they're on tight budgets, and they are trying to make low risk decisions for entertainment to go out and have a nice night on the town, either by themselves or with their family. And they're looking at ticket prices that are $12 with concessions that are gonna push that tab up to $50 for a night out uh, for a wife, a husband, uh, and at least two kids. That's no good. And you're talking about 90 minutes of entertainment. So movie theaters are having to figure out how to add more bang for the buck more mileage for that entertainment factor. And that's why FDX movie theaters, where you're sexually experiencing things like fog machines, light shows in the theaters, better food, moving chairs that shake during climactic scenes in action movies. These are actually doing quite well for the Regal Cinema brand. Uh, and that also was quite an experience for Furiosa viewers uh, going out to see it over Memorial Day weekend. People are willing to spend more money. They just want to know they're going to have a good time. Yeah, I forgot all about Regal. I mean, you're right. Um, you know, fog machines and moving chairs sounds pretty good. Do you think at any point, I mean, when you think about where we were in uh, way back when and even Casper the Friendly Ghost Days, but, you know, do we ever get back to people going full force, Stephen, to the theater quickly? You know, I think we need to return to a hopeful Hollywood that is telling stories that people are excited about, that they feel warmly about, that are painting a positive vision of the future. I think that says a lot about why Top Gun Maverick was so successful. That's why Star Wars yeah. changed Hollywood in 1977. Right, it brought right. us out of a malaise. And gosh, Furiosa, yeah. what a bleak movie. <laughs>
Okay, yeah. Look at Taylor Swift brought in 260 yeah. million worldwide. Chad, a final quick thought on the movie world, and does something come? Is something in the pipeline to improve this? Decent slate for the back half of the year. Better slate for 2025. There were some mo more movies that were announced to be released in 25. That's a positive. But the fact that 44 million people traveled this weekend over Memorial Day, an all-time record, uh, kind of confirms Stephen's points. People want experiences. People want something different. And if there's if there's not the content uh, at a big screen, two hours sitting in a theater, they're not going to go. DraftKings is down 13%. I know you sometimes talk about gaming. Do you have any thoughts on DraftKings flutter in 10 seconds? There's this bill on taxes that might hit these guys. Sure, Illinois has historically been the most volatile state in the country in terms of gaming taxes, in terms of the gaming regulations. And they came out again here, they're gonna raise taxes potentially on sports betting, DraftKings and FanDuel. Uh, owned by company Flutter are the biggest two companies there. So both companies are down six to 12% in sympathy. The risk is that other states see what Illinois is doing, saying these companies are making okay. a lot of money and they're gonna increase taxes. Okay, Chad Bainan, Stephen Kent, thank you both.